Hi everyone, this is Michael Swartz. I'm going to show you how to remove a subject from a chroma key background. In particular, this lesson is going to deal with complex issues like fine detail and hair, and also inconsistent and uneven green uh, and blue screen masks. Um, this image is a, is a pretty good example of a difficult chroma key because the hair is a very similar color to the green background so it would be hard to extract a mat. Usually um, the chroma key color is, is uh, you know, chosen based on the, the foreground object that you're trying to remove. And in this case, because the hair is, is a very uh, light color, it may have done a little bit better on a blue because uh, blonde, blonde and brown hair might work a little bit better against that. But we can still, I think, extract a pretty decent map from this. I'm going to show you some tricks on how to do that. And uh, these shadow areas are also a little bit problematic, but we'll deal with those as well. So the first step to do is I just want to go over a couple of the tools that are, are available in Photoshop. The first one is under the Select menu, there's a Color Range option. And uh, let's just uh, reset this. And, and if you notice, there's a few options up here you can select green, for example, and it will um, give you sort of a, a basic um, green key. Um, but generally, you're going to have better luck with a sample, uh, sampled color method. And if you just click in any area and then change the fuzziness value, you can expand and contract the selection based on the sampled color. And you can add and subtract to that selection with these plus and minus eyedropper tools. I want to show you um, the, a few pitfalls to this tool. Uh, let's just say that this is our this is as good as we can get. Okay, and usually what I do is I select a color that's nearby one of the most problematic areas, which is in this image. It's down here near where these very very fine and light colored hairs are. So I've just clicked down there, and I have it showing me a black mat on top of it, so I can kind of see what the mask will look like. And, uh, and then you can also, if you have this local, localized color clusters turned on, you get an additional slider with this range. And that can be very handy as well. I'm going to leave it at 100%. And I've just sampled right here. I'm not going to add any additional uh, selections to that. Let's click OK and take a look at the selection. So it's running as a selection now. Let's go up to Select, Save Selection. Click OK. And let's look at it. So this is what that tool gave us. And if you zoom in to these problematic areas, um, it did an OK job, but it's actually quite chunky and, and pixelated in these areas around the, the finest detail. So it's not a perfect mask at all. Now let's look at these channels individually. Here's the red channel of this image, the green and the blue. The green and the blue have the best definition around these hairs. Red is not really useful to us, but the green is, and potentially the blue channel as well. Sometimes you have to use a combination. I think the green channel is probably the one to start with because the green screen is being used. So let's duplicate this green channel by dragging it down to that copy document icon. All right, and now let's look at the, this is the version that the uh, color range uh, tool gave us. And this is the copy of the green screen. And if we zoom into the, these detailed areas, you can see what we lost in the color range tool. Okay, it's, it's kind of crushed all these delicate values up here in, in the, uh, all this detail is kind of lost. So it's not really an effective solution for us. I don't think we can use the color range in this particular instance. It might be good to create what's called a garbage mat, which is basically when you make um, a very extreme uh, selection of, let's say, the inner or outer uh, area of your uh, masking. And then you can combine that with a detailed mat. But otherwise, the, the color range tool is only going to get us so far. It's not, going to, it's not going to capture all that detail that we need. I'm going to get rid of it. Let's delete that. Now, the green copy, on the other hand, this is something I think we can work with. 
this has some, some, uh, some detail that we can extract. Um, all right, so the first thing is to open up a level. So in our, in our green channel copy, I'm going to hit Command L or Control L on the PC. And I don't want to touch the dark side yet. Okay, we're not going to be working on this side. We're going to be mostly working in the mid range and the high range. And the goal is to basically crush the white values so that they disappear, but we maintain that detail in the hair. So we want to crush this to the left until we start to see those values disappear. And it looks like right about there. And now we can grab the mid values and bring those to the right and darken them up a little bit. And it's a little bit of a balancing act. You've got to go back and forth between these two different values. But you'll find that once you've cropped or, or crushed that white value, you can pretty much leave it alone. And then it's just a matter of playing with the mid-range until you get a nice en enough amount of contrast around these hairs. And I always start with the most problematic area because from there I can, I can always either make separate or cop copy the masks and, and do slightly different approaches for each one and then merge them all at the end. And in this case, if I can get the detail you know, that I need out of this particular region with this setup, I think it will be a lot easier to deal with the rest of the map, even down in the shadowy areas. Okay, now let's look around the rest of this. And you can see it's still quite dark up here, but if we brightened it any more, we would lose all this fine detail. So in order to, to keep that, we just have to kind of ignore the top part of the head right here and just work, work on the dif most difficult aspect. I'm going to copy this mask again so I can always go back to it. All right, and this is going to be um, for the top head, and this is for the uh, detail. Okay, now for this top head mask, I'm going to now just worry about this and uh, hit Command L again to bring up levels. And same deal. I'm, I'm going to for this. I'm going to just crush those white values until I see that background disappear and then pull the mid-ground values as well. Now, I don't want to go too far because if I do, I'll, I'll start to cut away all, all these hairs in that detail that I want to keep. So I have to kind of be very careful. I'm looking over here in this region. Look at those hairs as I crush the white values. See, they disappear. I, I want to stop just short of making those hairs disappear. All right, and then pull the mid-ground values in. OK, I think this is pretty pretty good um, for the next step, although I want to make sure that I'm not losing too much detail over here. Let me look at the detail pass. OK, the detail pass does have that, so that's good. All right, so for this top of the head, I'm going to now switch over to the next step, which is using the dodge and burn tools to manually paint away the uh, values that I don't want. So I'm going to select under the uh, Dodge and Burn tool option, I'm going to select the Dodge tool, select Highlights, and I'm going to set the exposure value to 1, 1%. So it's really subtle, and I'm going to use my tablet and uh, even soften this brush up all the way so it's very soft. And now it's a, it's a subtle amount, but I'm just going to go around these areas. And it's only affecting the highlights. So this is a, a good approach to kind of getting rid of some of that detail. Maybe increase this value to, let's say, 5. Yeah, there we go. Now you want to be careful of this kind of thing we need to decrease the size of our brush. If this was for a high resolution piece for a poster, unless you have specialized keying tools, this is just what you got to do. There's no way around it.
So I've increased my brush to about 10% now. Let's go to 50%. I'm going to increase my brush size a little. Okay, I'm going to decrease the opacity to 10% now just to get these little tiny details. Back up to 20%. Got to be careful of these intersections. These are the toughest parts where the hair overlaps. Okay, now let's bring those that brush down up a little bit in size. 20% opacity here. Scale my brush down. zoom out and increase my brush size and set it to about 10%. Maybe that's a little less. Let's do uh, 3%. I am cutting away a little bit of the detail and just to keep this tutorial under an hour <laughs> I want to uh, just quickly go through this. Obviously if you want to keep every one of these hairs you're going to spend more time on it and there's just no way around that. There are specialized tools for keying. Um, sometimes I'll use After Effects. After Effects comes bundled with a really wonderful tool made by the Foundry. It's called Keylight. And you can use that and get pretty good results and then export it as a Photoshop layered file and go from there. But I'm not going to cover that in this lesson. some of these okay I'm just gonna grab this detail as well over here And I may have to go back to that detailed mask that we saved instead and use that instead because it looks like a lot of details getting zapped away and I don't want to lose that. 
So now let's look at that detail pass and zoom in to these regions. And for this, I'm just going to zoom my, bring my brush up pretty big and just kind of worry about the perimeter. I'm going to set my opacity to 10% and just worry about all this out here. I'm not going to touch the hair yet. I'm just going to work my way into that afterwards. Okay, now I'm going to decrease my opacity to 1% and very carefully go in to these regions. Okay, let's go over these, this other side. Same deal, 10%, and then I'll work my way in toward the hair. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back to 1%. All right, let's take a look at the difference between the top head mask and the detail mask. And just as an experiment, I want to go back to that detail mask and see if I can get a better selection out of this one. Let's set my opacity to, let's do 3%. Whoop, 3%, there we go. If you press 0 and 3, that will go to 3%. Let's go to 1%. This is so subtle. It's um, This is a really tricky region. You know, I have to decide, do I need all of these hairs too? You know, sometimes you can just cut them out and you won't. Uh, your model might even be appreciative because you've gotten a few, rid of a few stray hairs. That don't need to be there. So let me look at this top head. I think I have a better mask on the top head version. So what I'm going to do is combine these somehow. So let me show you how I do that. I'm going to duplicate this detail layer one more time. And then I'm going to load the top head 
as a selection. So command click or control click on it. And let's go to the detail copy. I'm going to hide my selection. So I'll hit control or command H. The selection is still running, but it's hidden. And now with my brush tool, just a regular brush and the color set to white, I'm going to uh, start painting away the, um, the background up here. Uh, but if I reveal my selection again, just to show you, right now I have a, a, a selection of the background. Now if I needed to modify the head colors, I would obviously have to uh, invert the selection. For now, I'm going to just use my brush and paint away the background. So I'm going to hit Command H again to hide that selection. Zoom in here. And with a white color, okay, and just paint that away. Okay, now I'm going to invert the selection. So Command Shift I, or you can go up to Select Inverse. Hide the selection again. Command H. And now I'm going to switch my brush color to black. And you can see it brings it back. So this is kind of a manual way to do a, a channel calculation. You can go up here and use image calculations to do some of the stuff that I just did. All right, I'm going to soften the brush up a little. So I can get at these regions near the edge with the hair. Okay, now I'm going to delete or deselect the selection. So Command D to deselect, or you can also go up to Select and then deselect. It's right here. And now I'm going to just uh, use my Burn tool. So it's in the same menu as the Dodge tool. Go to Burn, and I'm going to select Shadows 100%. Scale up my brush, soften it all the way, and just uh, go around these edges. Just stay within the subject. Whoop. Be careful of that. Now this area here, I'm going to come to that in a second. But before I do that, I want to just get the, the rest of the model up here. Now this area right here has some transparent pixels. I'm burning at 100%, so let's do 10%. And just see if I can maintain that. Let's do even less than that. Let's try 2% and scale down my brush to get just those areas. All right, let's get around this area here. That's another transparent spot. And now I can set it back to 100%, zero for 100%. Okay, zoom out. All right, now the areas that are in that shadowy area, I think I'm gonna dodge those first. So I'm gonna hit O for the shortcut for um, that tool and hit shift O to toggle back to the dodge tool. Scale up my brush. I think 10% should be fine. And I can just quickly go around that area, there we go. Now this area, I'm gonna undo a couple because this area right here is a little bit problematic. You can see that's a highlight. And uh, I'm gonna just scale my brush down and be a little more careful, maybe even harden the brush a little bit so I can get a better edge on that. There we go. Okay, let's go over to the other side. Okay, let's 
skill to brush down a little bit. Get all these holes. Okay, now I'm going to switch back to my burn tool. So shift O to get to the burn tool. And now I can go back with all these regions that I skipped earlier. Don't want to get too close to the edge because this is a soft brush. Now this area, I forgot to do that region. So I'm going to hit shift O again a couple times to get back to the dodge tool and go into those areas and remove the gray. Okay, now shift O again, back to the burn tool. Okay, now I'm just going to fill in these holes with my brush. So hit B for brush, X to switch the color to black for the foreground. And with 100% opacity, I'm just going to darken all these areas, fill them in. Okay, I want to zoom in on the hairs up here at the top. And I'm going to decrease my brush size and use a, a white color to just fill this in as well. Okay. All right, now that I have that, I'm going to use just a regular lasso tool to quickly make a selection around the perimeter of the character, of the subject here. And I'm going to just bring this around. All right, and I'm going to invert the selection. Command Shift I will do that and fill the background to white. Now let's go around the edges and make sure I didn't miss anything or I didn't cut anything off that I shouldn't have. I'm going to first go up to the top of the head. That looks all right. But this area right here needs to be burned out. So I'm going to hit O and then uh, Shift O until I get my dodge tool back. Let's get rid of all that. Okay, now as a as a check um, to see if there are any pixels that are difficult to see that I may have missed, I'm going to hit Command L to bring up my levels, and you can look on the histogram and see that uh, the, the kind of range. There's no mid ground anymore. We've got rid of all those mid ground pixels, so it's mostly just black pixels and white pixels. But I want to grab that black and drag it all the way to the right. And this will reveal any spots that we may have missed that we might need to get rid of. And I have to decide, do I need to worry about those or are they very, too subtle to, to worry about? Um, they are slightly visible. It depends on what you're compositing this on top of. If it's a dark background or a light background. Let's do it the other way and look inside the model and see if there are any holes that I missed. And it looks like there is a hole there and a, and a little bit there and up here as well. So I'm going to click Cancel and use using my 
brush, scale that up, and paint. And I'm also going to set this to be 100% hard so I don't accidentally go into any adjacent delicate areas. And set my color to black for the foreground. And I'll get rid of that spot that I saw there and there. Just paint all that away. Now let's do another check. Grab the white value, bring it all the way over. And it looks like I got pretty much everything except for a little spot right there. Okay, and then one more time with the dark. So there are some areas up here that are um, showing up. And we may not have to worry about them, but it'll take some testing to find that out. I'm going to just use my dodge tool and with a very low setting, 1%. Let's see if I can get some of these areas. I can see them now as I zoom in. Use my tablet and very carefully get rid of some of those. And this is why this kind of masking work can take, you know, hours and hours and hours. I'm doing it very quickly for demonstration purposes, just to show you the concept, how you do this kind of work. Okay, so we have a pretty good mask of this character, and now I think we can uh, begin to uh, test it out on some different backgrounds to see how it looks. So I'm going to go back to RGB channel here, and I like to work non-destructively, so I don't like to remove any pixels if I don't need to. Um, I'm going to load this detail copy as a mask so hit command or control and click on it and it will load it as a selection and now i'm going to just click on this mask layer button and it masks her away from the background the mask needs to be inverted though so select the ma layer mask and hit command i to in to invert that okay now, I'm also, I wanted to show you one more tool that can come in handy on occasion. I'm going to duplicate this layer, du uh, disable the layer mask temporarily. And I just wanted to sh point out a couple things. Uh, in the eraser tool uh, right here, there's an option for background eraser tool. This can work as well. And um, sometimes it's actually a good, really good approach because you can, you're, you're basically uh, changing the value that you're keying on a per pixel basis as you go around. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to just turn off the visibility of that layer zero just to show you how this tool works. And there are a few options here. I want to make sure I, I have discontiguous selected because I want it to select pixels that are not necessarily connected to each other. And the tolerance value for a mask like this where it's where the key is very uneven and it's 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 going to be a really problematic uh, key because it, there's such a wide range of varying different pixels. Um, I'm going to use a relatively high tolerance value, 32. You might go to 24, but I'm going to start with 32. And the way it works is you click on the pixel that you want to remove, and then you move inward toward the subject like this. and it's removing all those green pixels. Now, both of these approaches leave a, a green fringe. We'll deal with that in a moment. Now, right here, it may have removed too much. I'm going to undo, and let's decrease the threshold. To 24. Now what I'm doing is is considered destructive. I'm literally deleting pixels. And so if you do use this tool, what I recommend you do is make a layer mask from it after you're all done and apply that to the original image and then delete this 
this layer because you don't want to work destructively if you can help it. You may decide you need to go and paint more detail under the hair. So if you delete the pixels like I'm doing right now, you can't do anything about it. I'm going to increase this back to 32. Very carefully selecting right on that edge there to get that green. And then I can get rid of that as a second pass. So I'm getting the edge. And then I grab out here and remove those as well. Select out here, move in. Oh. So interesting, it's uh, getting confused in that region. I'm going to decrease my tolerance to eight. And now just, um, I th yeah, that gives me a, <clears throat> a better result in those shadow areas. You might find you need to do a combination of these different approaches and then combine the, the best results of both into a single perfect selection. I'm going to increase my threshold back to 32. Okay, so this is my background erase tool result. And now with this selected, I'm going to hit Command and click on that thumbnail to load it as a selection. And let's save this as a channel, an alpha mask. Let's look at it. So this is what we got as a result. And if you look at the, the hair areas, um, it did maintain a lot of the detail, but some of it was lost. So there's a trade-off. There's it, It's pretty hard to get a perfect mask with any one of these tools. So my point is that sometimes you have to combine the best of both worlds for all of them and make one kind of mega mask out of from the best of both. So uh, this could work, but it would still require some of the same things that we did in the other one, where we dodge and burn these darker areas to remove the, um, the, the background. So, but I'm, I'm not gonna use this approach, but it, oh, if you did, let me just follow through and show you the, the, what you would do. So if we did have this as a mask, let me just uh, very quickly go around this just to demonstrate what you would do when I say non-destructive editing what what does that mean so I'm gonna just set that to black okay so let's just pretend that that is a great mask and I like it and I it was derived from the erase background tool I'm gonna load that as a selection and delete that layer mask 
And actually, let's just delete that whole layer. Let's duplicate this layer, delete the layer mask. And now we can make a layer mask for it. And this is non-destructive because I can always turn off the layer mask. I can always edit the layer mask. And I haven't deleted any pixels from the original image. Whereas the other approach did, we were literally deleting pixels. So try to avoid that. I'm going to stick with this one that I hand painted. I think it's a better mask overall. So I'll call this image photo. And now I'm going to make a solid color background. All right, let's click OK and bring that down to the bottom. OK, so you can see the fringe. It's very visible. And the way to get rid of that fringe in Photoshop is uh, by using a, a, a special layer, and we'll use a, a color blend mode. So let's make a new layer, and let's call this um, defringe fix 01. And I'm going to set the color mode the blending mode to color, and I'm going to use a clipping mask. So I'm going to option click in between those two layers. And now using my brush tool, and let's scale that down a little bit, and also make sure that it's soft. I'm going to grab colors that are nearby the fringe that I want to um, use to clean up the green. So to, to show you what, what I mean by that, let's just start painting away that green fringe. I'm just color selecting with my option key to quickly grab the eyedropper. Option click. And I'm painting away, replacing that green with the color that I've been sampling. Okay, now this area we need to be a little more careful. So I'm going to maybe shrink my brush down a little. Bring, increase the brush size a little. I may need to do another another version of this for the luminance because it looks like it's a little bit bright because it was backlit. Okay, that area is the shirt, so we've got to be careful not to use the hair color. Okay, so it's a little bit bright up there. 
So what I'm going to do for that is make an adjustment layer. Let's make a let's use levels. And I'm going to darken up that region just by grabbing this slider and bring it down and probably use the mid-range. All right, and darken those pixels up. And now I'm going to go to my mask, the layer mask that's automatically generated with uh, a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to fill it to black so it effectively turns it off. And now using that layer mask, I can paint it back in using a white color for the alpha. So I'm going to increase the scale of my brush, make sure it's pretty soft. And I want to make sure that I'm only affecting the uh, transparent pixels. All right, and let's decrease my opacity to about 10%. And now I can just paint in the effect of that adjustment layer. Now, depending on what you're compositing this on top of, you might want to leave that uh, you know, backlit area. It's, it's also called a light wrap. And it can, it, it can uh, make it more realistic if you're in front of a bright background to leave it. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to just show you how you can remove it. Okay, so there we have a pretty good mask, and um, we ran through a couple different approaches. We used the uh, remove background eraser as an example, and we also grabbed the, a copy of the green and created a detail mask, and we combined that with a more of um, a general garbage mask uh, in a less problematic area, combine the two. After I'm all done with this sort of work, I go back and clean up the channels that I don't need anymore. And I'm not going to keep any of these alphas because they're already uh, the best The best ones are um, part of layer masks. So I don't need to have a duplicate copy of these. So I'll just get rid of those. We'll leave that layer mask there because that's this. And this one I'm going to call uh, Levels Darken Fringe 01. OK, so we can turn that on and off and see what we just did. And there's the green fringe. And um, by the way, the, the reason I used a color fill here is because it's very easy to just change the color with one click just to see how it, how it works against different colored backgrounds with one click. I rarely use the um, default background layer that comes in with Photoshop. I usually delete that and use this because it's so, it's so convenient to quickly change the colors. All right, I hope this was helpful.